I'm just gonna go straight into it. This is my first ever video with a face cam on and I would be lying if I said I wasn't nervous about it, but we do it anyway. So I say, let's just do this. Hello there, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, welcome to my channel. I'm Wistop and I like building in The Sims. Before we jump into the game, I would just like to say that you can follow me on Twitter or X. My handle is Wistofu. You can drop me a follow there if you're in, on there, if you'd like. I post thoughts on Sims thing, and share my builds as well and if you're interested i post all of my builds on the gallery my id is cats against crime i will leave it here on the screen and i will also leave it in the description if it, that's easier for you to copy and paste but yeah since that's out of the way let's jump into the game so i just loaded up into enford on badly and i thought we could do something brutalist for this build if you've seen any of my last builds i have built big lots lots with a lot of units in them and they take me a lot of a lot of time to do so i thought that today we could do something simpler and by that i mean that i want to do a regular build so nothing multi-level or anything like that and i want to do something brutalist in this world because this world is so lush and so green and i kind of want to go with the idea that maybe it's an abandoned lot that didn't make into construction fully and then someone acquired it and maybe built on it and then made it into this modern contemporary home so that's the idea i had we can try it out. This lot looks not too big and not too small. Let's put those. And first things first, this is the front side of the lot. I was thinking of maybe doing an L shape, but I don't want to make it too big. I feel like that's too big already. So I would do something like this maybe. And the thing about Brutalist homes is that they're very, they can be very square and very boxy and maybe not interesting to look at. But also they have these really, at least some of them have some rounded parts, I think to make interest, I think to add some dimension and maybe not make it look too flat. But I don't know. I don't think I want to use any round walls today just because of the way they behave in The Sims. And I'm Feeling like this is too big already okay so i know that i want to have like a balcony here and i'm thinking of using some platforms or the roof instead of using the actual roofs that we have maybe something like this and i wanted to try to create like a balcony here with some greenery around it like so let's actually bring that up okay that's not too bad uh, but we got to figure out the rest of the build and it's looking too one-dimensional we need to break it up somehow i think creating a separation in the roof might help and actually, I want, I've been wanting to try something different, which is doing these types of walls and then placing like some type of window there to make it look like an interesting architectural detail or just like their open windows. And I feel like a brutalist house is a good place to do that. So we can try it. We can test it out. And so I'm thinking of those island living windows, these ones. So if we put them like this, so if we raise them up and then delete the walls, this is what they look like. Mm. Maybe the black could look interesting. I'm not sure how much I'm liking this, but let's just trust the process for now and see where it takes us. In any case, we can just go back and change it. Weirdly, I think I like it better without the windows there. What if I just keep these ones? Let's do the eco lifestyle windows. I don't like how any of that looked. I'm just gonna scratch this idea. However, I still think we need to create some interest by maybe breaking this up under. Let's try adding some balconies on the side. I like doing these little boxes in modern builds just because they look, well, very modern. And they make it not so flat. You just make a room, a one by three, and then you plop a window. And you kind of get some privacy. Actually, if we swap for this, we have a clear window. Yeah, that looks good. So in terms of that mention, maybe we can use these windows from the Desert Lux pack. And I think I would actually bring this one inwards the bottom floor. Now I'm thinking this needs to be aligned. I think that looks all right. We need to fill in this, these gaps. Yeah, that looks okay. A lot of the process of building is just trial and error. And it's more error than actually getting things right, at least for me, because I'm always trying to do something different or something out there and it doesn't always work out. That's okay. We learn along the way. That's what matters. Should we put, put this on a platform? I feel like this is the ideal or the max height I usually go for for modern builds. For the front door, I think it would make more sense to put it on the side just because I want to use glass and it would make it probably better. No, I think maybe this one would look better. Yeah. And up here, I want this to be the balcony to the main bedroom so we can place another big door here. This one, yes. 
that is slowly coming together. Maybe we can repeat or try something similar here. The idea we had there on the other side. I mean, I think it works so far. I think it's fine for now. I don't think I want to repeat these angled windows on this side. I think it would be best to have an outdoor area in the back that you can use maybe with a pool because this is a big lot. I'm just now realizing. I can use these open ones. Maybe just one of them. This one is better. Maybe we can repeat these windows here. Oh, we can always add maybe one window at the end of this. Let's try to think of this floor plan real quick. So the bottom floor, I want it to be open space, but I still want it to have some structure. So we have the entrance here and maybe we can put bathroom right by the entrance. Then we can do kitchen and dining here. Over here, we can do some sort of living room. Let's just paint that green real quick and add some bushes there. Okay, this is where I miss the tool mod because I just copy objects at a certain height. But I want to be able to make a build without mods. Like it's important to play the game as it is sometimes. I say this while I'm using debug items, but that's fine. Actually, I like how this turned out here. And I feel like I want to repeat that throughout the build. I'm not feeling these, so let's just replace them with a sliding door here. I think this will work. Yeah, that's all right. It looks more structured. I want to do probably a long window. Let's try to go for this one. Yeah, that looks fine. And I think I want to use the stairs here to separate one space from the other. And we can also see what it looks like on the upstairs. So if we did maybe something like this, we can even squish maybe a laundry in here. And I'm thinking that we probably want to add some windows here since this is going to be the dining area. Maybe two of those or one, we'll see. Then we know that the, we want this to be the main bedroom. So we can do possibly a bathroom here, an ensuite, and over this wall, perhaps some wardrobes. We can use some built-in wardrobes. So for other bedrooms, maybe this could be one. That's a really big bedroom. Maybe this could be another bedroom and another bathroom, maybe here. I feel like this should be a shared bathroom and this one should not exist. Because I feel like there should be a bathroom for both of these. And then this one is just for the main bedroom. Actually, let's make these wider. I think that makes more sense. Let's maybe try to center this a little bit. Like this. I want to place some more hedges along. So maybe let's try that right here and it probably can go out the back as well i'm placing them like this first and raising the platform later just because if i raise the platform right now i cannot place them on a height for some reason so just to save some time i'm gonna do it like this now let's raise it up twice there we go copy the trim beautiful Maybe this should go out the front a little bit. Yeah, I like that better. I'm thinking this still needs some dimension on this part. So I'm actually going to do one of these here and down here. Maybe we can do turn this into another space with a hedge. Like so. So I think we stick to the original plan. So kitchen, dining, living, laundry, and then we can do bathroom here. This would be a really big bathroom. We can have maybe a sunken shower area. It's going to be fine. I think our floor plan is figured out by now. So maybe let's figure out the outside or the rest of it. I feel like we could sneak in a little window. Let's keep that for now and see how we feel about it later. I'm just gonna switch the wardrobe placement to this wall here. So we have this free wall to put the bed and the bedside tables. Maybe we should do a clear fencing for this balcony here. That's better. I feel like I want to extend this to this area too. Wait, what happened to these stairs? Um. Okay, that fixed it. I said we could have a pool. Actually, it could be on over on this side. We could do maybe a lap pool. Okay, this looks all right. Maybe just to align with this space here. Okay, that's fine. We can have maybe a, or maybe an outside eating area. We could probably extend this 
over here. So when I try to place a fence here, the sunken platform disappears. I'm not sure why, but let's just maybe not add that. And something that I want to do is keep this green because there's obviously a lot of green spaces around. So maybe let's filter by cottage living and see what trees we have. I can see some of these being used here. Maybe use a couple of them. This is such a pretty tree. Let's keep it there. Before we get too crazy with it, I think we should try to pick some colors for the exterior. And already I'm thinking this one, it has a brighter color and it has a nice texture to it as well. That's another thing with brutalist architecture is that you don't really get a lot of color. You get mostly just neutral, so grays, blacks and whites, and maybe some browns, uh, some beiges, so it's not very colorful. That's why you need to add, or at least I think you need to add interest with textures and shapes and dimension and try to create this thing that looks interesting and still isn't just a box, even though it is. I'm thinking now that this should come out more, just to frame these windows better. Yeah, I think I like that. Okay, let's see some flooring for the outside. We should get maybe just the Desert Lux ones. I think, yeah, they're pretty, pretty brutalist. I don't know if anybody else agrees, but I think we need some more modern foundations in the game. Could we do our sunken lounge here instead? Because this seems like a good spot for it. We have all this space. Let's maybe bring it down a little bit more. Don't forget to save your builds. So there's this really cool item from City Living, which is just this really long ivy wall that comes out of this planter. And if I had the tool mod, I would make it the size that I need, but I think this is also fine. This fits here just almost flawlessly. And I really feel like this build and this wall specifically needed some greenery. So there we go, two birds, one stone. Maybe we can do the same in the back. Yeah, I feel like that added some more dimension. We can place another object there later. Also, what is that? I don't know what to do after that. Well, let's maybe put some more landscaping in. I'm gonna use these same hedges around the place just to have some sort of continuity. I missed the tool mod. You know, I was thinking it would be so good to be able to paint the foundation just like we do with the platforms. Like if we can, if we could paint with any of the wall paints that we already have in the game, that would be pretty, pretty sick because I would make these two the same texture, the same wall paint. So they looked better or more seamless, not just that, but also I know we can paint ceilings now, but the inside of the roofs, I also would like to paint that because it's easier to, to just show. So you see how this texture has texture here, but it's white on the under part. And then for instance, if we place this one, it doesn't anymore because it's a different texture and probably the look that they were going for. However, I feel like we should be able to choose or paint or not, depending on what we wanted to do and not on the texture itself. But that's just one request among the hundreds I would probably have. It's good to dream sometimes. But I was thinking we can maybe use these in our conversation pit. We can frame them with this maybe. Let's use these from Seasons. One thing we can do is turn some of these into planters. So if we bring some greenery in, it doesn't look so bland. Okay, food for thought. I think maybe this one makes the most sense to put up here. I still feel like they're so far away. Okay, let's leave that for now and come back later and see how we feel about it. That's one thing I like about making speed builds is I can do something and then come back the next day or two days later and see what I'm liking or not. Whilst if I'm doing everything in one go, then it's harder for me to decide what's what's working, what isn't. So for the flooring, brutalist homes usually have these concrete floors, which I'm not mad about. Let's Again, trust the process because it worked fine last time. Let's bring in the same wallpaper and everything. Oh yeah, that's looking pretty brutalist right here. I feel like we have to close this section off just because I don't like the way that the wall looks next to the stair wall. Maybe it's better if we just put some spandrels, some old looking ones. 
to give this idea that it was an old build. But I want to add these columns from Eco Lifestyle just to frame them. Let's start on the kitchen. I think these from the new, well, they're not exactly new, but from the Chef Hustle stuff back look pretty good. I like the texture that these have. Scratch that. Let's try an all black look. Okay, that looks better. I will never get over the fact that we got these cabinets that go so seamless with the fridge. Chef's kiss. Let's just call it the base of the kitchen and change it now. So I like the idea of having the stove top and the kitchen counter and then the sink right in front of the window. We should do shelves on this side. I think maybe we can try lighter cabinets. I'm actually not sure about this. Actually, should we frame both of these with this? I think it would look more intentional. I said I wanted to bright it up and it's looking way darker than what I had anticipated. But I think we just need to fully embrace this black kitchen moment. Maybe some industrial lights will help with it. And I think we can add some stools at the end of these islands. These ones look good. I think they work okay. I like what we did with the outside. So maybe we can try to make something similar to get that warmth still. And as for the chairs, we could probably use these. Maybe let's align the window with it. Let's do these ones from growing together. For curtains, I want to use the Desert Lux curtains. We already have so much of this kit anyway in this build, so let's just continue to use it. I feel like textile is a really good way to bring warmth. Now that I'm looking at it, I'm kind of liking this darker shade. Maybe let's do a mix and match like this. Okay, that seems like it's balanced. I like these chairs a lot from the Desert Lux kit. We can use them and we can probably use this one as our coffee table. I'm not sure which side the, the door opens to, but I think it opens here. And we also don't want to obstruct this passageway here. So we probably want to have these two over here, coffee table here. We would have our couch over on this side and probably the Desert Lux couch because it's just so good. And that means that we get this passageway free. So we should put the door to the bathroom over here. But now I'm not so sure about this one. So these chairs, I think we can do something like this. Or what I would really like is some of those fireplaces that have this hood coming out of them like this. I actually like that, but I think this needs to be larger. Yeah. Also, really big homes have these tables on the back, against the back of the couches. Maybe we do this one here to kind of hide the separation between the wall and the stairs. This table is also pretty brutalist. Maybe we replace these with this one over here. Another thing that I really like is the lamp, this one. And I think it looks so good as a modern piece. It's such a rich people house type of lamp. A square rug would be good for this space. I kind of like the swatch because it adds a bit of softness and it ties in a little bit with the warm whites and beiges that we have going on. I think this one from Industrial Loft, it has some good swatches and I like the fact that it has two levels. So we could use that. Now I just think we need a standing lamp of some sort. This one looks like it fits the space. Let's get the TV as well. Since we don't have the tool mod, we need to break those walls so it doesn't clip to them. Now let's raise this to a good height. And now we build those walls back. We still have a little bit of space here and maybe we can do an additional sitting area, maybe two chairs facing each other. We could do maybe just a reading space. So should we just spare the two of them? 
And now we do a little side table that this is the perfect side table for this build. We can get away with a fuzzy rug and I almost never use it because the main swatch is this, which I, I'm not very into, but in this color, it definitely works. And over on this side, I was thinking we could put these paintings in some sort of console. They have really good green textures like so. We can make our own console. And I kind of don't mind that it has some lights underneath because it makes it look expensive. Not cluttering it too much makes it more, look more contemporary. Okay, I know, this one. How about this? I like the dark brown. You know what, let's just use this one. We still need to clutter these shelves, so let's get some mugs out. Let's add some books as well. You need some cooking books maybe some plates as well i think it has enough clutter and leaves you a lot of space to complete with some other things that you might need so it's next day and like i said earlier i like having some time to reflect on the build and to come back to it you know with a clear mind and i think it helps me notice what i like what i don't like and what i want to change it's just always better to when we are thinking about the bigger picture of the whole build and i also took the time to search up some inspiration pictures for bedrooms and the bathrooms and there are a lot of cool elements that we can add in the sims or try to Let's dive again and continue this build. So the first thing that I think would be cool to add is these vertical lines from Eco Lifestyle. Brutalism often uses wood details to make it warmer. So I think we could add some of those. And I also think it's a good way to introduce spots for the ivy to grow like we did on this spot. So for this bathroom, we wanted to have a sunken shower, so let's do that. And I'm thinking of this dine out one. I'm just adding these same slabs here. Forgot to put my headphones on. And now we should add this shower. I think we should do black accents for this bathroom. And I'm thinking we should include, we should merge this table with some other sink to kind of create a custom sink. Or we can use this island one. Maybe if we raise it up. Okay, I raised it up once and I will play test it just to make sure that it's functioning. Let's include this mirror. Let's just put some decorations around. Let's maybe put them closer so it looks more accurate. Yeah, that looks okay. And also some towels. I go for this one a lot because it's so simple and good and it looks good in a lot of the swatches and in a lot of homes. Back on the bedrooms, this main one, I think we should put the bed on a platform. So there's a trick to make that seem like it's sunken in the platform. If I remember correctly, all you need to do is push this one back and place the bed where you want it to be. And then if you do this again, it will push the bed back and you cannot place it under. So what we do is you can place it like this and then you can grab the platform tool and just make the platform like this and then you have a sunken bed in the platform i'm just gonna test these slabs also behind the bed let's change this bed color to white i actually like the color of these shelves from the chef hustle stuff pack i don't want both of them but i think we can hide one of them so it looks like it's just one Let's get this fuzzy rug out here. This everyday clutter kit is also so good to add clutter in the bedroom. Mug here. Maybe instead of this light, we should have sconces. I think these are modern enough to go here. If we add it in the black. I'm not sure about the black here. Now I'm thinking we should have this just on like a third of the wall. Maybe it should be centered on the bed. Okay, I think this this is more balanced. It was too busy before. This one has a very unique design to it and I barely use it, so let's add that here. So I just changed a few colors and I think this looks more believable to me. I think the black, white and gray is working better and we can add some wood details to a different bedroom. And I think I wanna add a tall light behind it. And let's do black, grabbing the same curtains we already have around. Let's do black to match everything. 
The brutalist bedrooms that I've seen, they are very bare a lot of the times. They have a lot of space with nothing on it. I think it takes on a lot of the minimalist influence. I'm thinking this is a massage chair and we should add this little stool. Even though this is a seat, I like using it as a table. Since these are floating, I would use the tool mod to bring them down. But one little trick that we can use is place a shelf at the height that you want the object to be. And I suggest using a big shelf so it has more slots. And then you just grab it and it's not floating anymore. That's a lesson in trickery. I'm thinking this is a kid's bedroom. We could make it a little bit warmer. We should paint the ceiling with some wood. Don't worry, I have a vision. And if it doesn't work out, then it's fine. And it's really odd to think about a kid's bedroom in a brutalist home because to me, that's a very crude style and I cannot fathom the two of them together. It's such a weird concept to me. And I feel like we should do wood on this wall as well. I actually like this tiny living bed. So let's try to use it. This blush pink is really pretty. Let's add this painting over on this wall. I think we can get away with some more stuff from Tiny Living to tie everything together and probably make this the most or the coziest bedroom in the whole house. Even though we still we still have one bedroom to go. Let's do this one. And I think this green would go well together with this blush pink that we already have. Honestly, Tiny Living is... I'm really liking the Tiny Living in this bedroom. And I think this cozy rug in these brutalist bedrooms make total sense and I think I want to keep that there. Let's add this big light here. And then I just want to add a few things for a kid, like some... like maybe a teddy bear. Can add Blarfy to the corner here. So I'm doing just the same trick to place this little octopus on top of the bed. I said the green. Journey to Batu, the pack. It's so good to add like objects for children. I'm not the biggest fan of this pack, but it has cute stuff for the kids. Also add this little guy here. I feel like I always clutter up the kids' bedroom way more than the others but it just makes sense in my mind to be that way. I think to finalize, we can add a mirror on this wall. Let's do this one with the stickers. And we have our kid's bedroom. For this last bedroom, I wanna keep it quite simple, but I think it would be a good idea to add some color in it. And I think instead of bedside lamps, we can have some hanging lamps just to switch it up. And that's also something that I saw a lot in brutalist bedrooms. Now the question is, which one should we use? Honestly, let's just go with these that have the plant hanging from it. I'm honestly thinking we just use the same rug that we've been using. And my idea for this bedroom is probably for a teenager or a young adult. I'm gonna switch a few things because I wanna have a desk here and then probably a wardrobe here. Let's add a computer. Let's do a whole setup instead. Actually, just dawn on me, we can use this wall as the wardrobe because it's not being used for anything else. Let's keep that in. Okay, that looks all right. This mirror, I think, looks good here. And I kind of want to use the same chair. I really like this alarm clock. And I think we can just finalize with this coat hanger here. And I think this bedroom is finished. I just placed some more clutter and I want to leave this wall blank. I think it's really in line with a lot of what I've seen from this style. We're almost finished, but we still have three bathrooms left to do. I'm going to do that off camera and then we will be right back with the final build. So here we are at the final build. I did some more landscaping and just finished up with some greenery around. As I said, I wanted it to be kind of married to the nature around and this is the back of the build it's pretty simple but i like it that way and i think it fits the style of the home as well and this is a view from the side this is the sunken lounge that we have outside right off the bat and this is the front door as soon as we go through we have this 
table right here we have a plant and we have the first bathroom and this is what the first bathroom looks like i thought this would be a nice bathroom to kind of show off to your guests because this is probably what the guests would use so quite simple and it has some whites instead of blacks if we continue to the house we have the dining area right here so we included some browns and some wood they have some decoration there and if we move along we get to the kitchen so it's very dark very moody but it's very big and it has a lot of appliances it has some clutter as well you have this view to the pool maybe you the sims can watch their kids as they play and i think it's a really good space to entertain because because it connects to the dining area if we move through this industrial looking arch we have the stairs but first let's check out the living room first we have the seating area right here where you can probably read and there's a door right here let's check this quickly this is a laundry room which is just a two by two so it's very squished but it has a washing machine and a dryer a hamper back onto the living room we have the proper living room with a tv these windows on both sides are just chef's kiss to me and we have a mixture of warmer whites blacks browns and grays through this door we have the second bathroom so it is very narrow and long it has a lot of blacks just like i mentioned before and there's this sunken area for the shower and you have the basin there i actually did play test this and the sims could not use it so i had to raise it down again but i think this is fine to to use as it is then we have the toilet we go back out and we can actually check quickly the view from here so we have the barbecue there we have the pool we have some lounge chairs there and then back inside let's take the stairs and go up this is the landing it's very simple and to the left we have our first bedroom which is the main bedroom so it's very very big it has a lot of grays whites blacks and it's just a place kind of for the parents to relax and we have two balconies actually so the first one it just has some lounge chairs with some beverages and you have this cool view from the front of the house and then the other balcony is really small but it has an easel and it also looks over the back of the house so it has access to the front and the back of the house and then it has its own ensuite so this is what it looks like there's a shower there it has two sinks and again as i mentioned very a lot of black accents but yeah overall i like it it's a staple of the brutalist style back into the hall we move on to the second bedroom which is a kid's bedroom and it's very unlike the parents bedroom it's warmer it's obviously kid friendly and it has much more clutter and i really like the way it turned out you can just tell that this kid likes plushies so we can move over to the next room which is the shared bathroom between the two kids of, of this house so it's a smaller bathroom and it has some mess towels again some black and some brown accents and then back into the hall we go to the last bedroom which is a teenage bedroom or at least i envision it like that and I added some beams just to add some more dimension to the ceiling and this one feels cozier than the first bedroom but I still feel like it's very brutalist and minimal you know it's a style that i enjoy that i enjoy building as well and I think that's the end of the the tour of this house so this brings us to the end of the video and I hope that you liked it. Let me know what you thought of this type of video where I do this face cam and we build in real time. I personally like filming it like this and I think it's more interesting for me and I hope it is to you as well. So any feedback that you have on this, I will be very thankful. If you like this house, I will put it up on the gallery. Again, my ID is Cats Against Crime. It's on the description. If you have any ideas, please let me know. I am always on the lookout for new things to build in the sims any comments that you leave are all very very appreciated especially since i'm still trying to figure out what the style of the channel is in terms of aesthetics and again i hope you enjoyed it and i will see you in the next one thank you so much for watching bye bye